And then all of a sudden in verse 4, this figure called the servant of the Lord re-emerges. The servant, there are four poems or passages that describe the activity of this strange servant of the Lord. And it's always in the context of the rebellious Israel, Israel failing to fulfill their purpose, and the servant of the Lord perfectly fulfilling God's pur purpose. It climaxes in Isaiah 53, where it speaks of the suffering of the servant to the point of death for the redemption of the world. Who is this suffering servant? Hey, brethren, who is this suffering servant? Only one person, the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it is, it says, after the rebellion of God's people, it says, verse 4, the sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue. If we want to be aligned with God's purpose, we have to have an instructed tongue like Jesus. Everything Jesus said was aligned with God's word. He spoke the very words of God. James says, if our tongue is under control, our whole body, our whole being will be under control. Isn't that true? Jesus had an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. How many of you would like to have that ability to speak a word that sustains the weary? Then it says, he wakens me morning by morning. He wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. Mark 1 35 says, a great while before day, Jesus went to a solitary place and there prayed. He spent time before God and God spoke to him. He was a listener to God's word and purpose. We have to be listeners if we want to be aligned. Listeners, a trained ear. Must have a trained tongue, but also a trained ear. Then it goes on. And it says in verse 5, The sovereign Lord has opened my ears, and I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. When God speaks to us, we must not draw back or be rebellious, but we must be submissive to his will and purpose. Now, Jesus had a struggle. It wasn't easy. Because it says that Jesus agonized with going to the cross. And he prayed, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He asked God, he said, is there another way? And sometimes God calls us to do things that are unpleasant, that involve suffering. And we struggle with that. And we say, Lord, is there another way? But we must end up saying, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done, because God knows best. Amen? But then Jesus went, it went further to say, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Jesus went through agony and suffering for us. He went through, can you imagine the creator of the universe, the creator of the universe, allowing little ants, little creatures that he made to mock him, to spit on him, to tear out his beard, to beat him. Jesus could have just snapped his finger and there would just be ashes, I mean literally. But he submitted to God's will, humbled himself, and he said, irrespective of the cost of suffering and the shame, I am going to obey the will and the purpose of my Father. Aren't you glad that Jesus did that? We wouldn't be around if he didn't do that. Verse 7, because the sovereign Lord help, helps me, the Lord is our help, brethren, says, I will not be disgraced. You might be put to shame by men, but before God, you will be honored and rewarded. It says, therefore, I have set my face like a flint. Jesus was committed, determined, wholeheartedly aligned to God's purpose. And he was determined to fulfill God's plan. It says, and I know that I will not be put to shame he who vindicates me is near who then bring charges against me let him let let us face each other how was jesus vindicated the resurrection amen the bible says for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame 
and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. God is our vindicator. God vindicates us, and then if God vindicates us, who can accuse us? Who can bring a charge against us? Who can accuse us? He says, let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who, who is he who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. And listen to this conclusion. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? As of Jesus. Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This morning we want to do that. We want to trust God. We want to rely on him. We want to express our commitment to him. And I'm going to ask you if there is an area of your life that's not aligned to God's way and his purpose, that you respond by coming forward for prayer. We are going to pray and ask God to give that energy and that strength and that impartation that we would come into alignment with his purpose. Maybe in your life there are obstacles and barriers that are hindering you and you know them. You want to advance, but there are these things that are holding you back. Maybe you know what to do, but you just can't come to do it because you have habits in your life that are just crippling you and you want deliverance and, and breakthrough to th this morning. God will minister to you and give you that breakthrough, whatever it is. Let's all bow our heads and listen.